thank you for giving me this opportunity to once again to an international arena and especially on the UNESCO to talk about this uh, problem of the uh, global level of toxic pollution. In fact, we may be really be able to say that one of the most important parts of this planet that is under toxic pressure are wetlands. And they are very important because of many, many other aspects, and especially about the ecosystem services that they provide. And now all ecosystem services are decreasing, and wetlands are getting dry, dried in many parts of the world, especially where I am living in Iran and that Middle Eastern area and uh, on their water, um, you know, water scarcity and pressure really. And they are really drawing and uh, making the big problem of the dust. Wetlands, I'm not gonna go so much through this, uh, you know, uh, profits that wetlands make for the people and for the planet, for all our living organisms. Uh, they are really kidneys of the planet. Uh, they provide many services. Um, but uh, later I'm going to point to a message that I had about 10 years ago, my first message about how pesticide are um, treated in developing countries. Uh, I, I lived about 20 years in, in fact, we started the University of Mazandaran by the Caspian, where, you know, paddy rice system is. And it was there that I observed lots of, lots of pesticide and fertilizer pressure really on this uh, paddy rice system. Every day spraying different type of pesticides and as you may be aware now in these years is not only pesticides. Pesticides are getting a, a part of the problem. There are now really millions of different chemicals. Endocrine disruptors, PCBs and that and that, you know, different dioxins, and many of them are groups of chemicals. And their metabolites, when they break, you know, and the possibility of synergism. They, they get synergized each, each, each other. One compound comes, get to bind, bound to the enzyme of the system of the human or frogs or snakes or any, and the other compound and make their effect. So this is synergism that we studied uh, very, very deeply during my PhD many years ago. Synergis synergism is very important. These are paddy rice that they are all over the Asian countries. We are gonna talk more about the Asian countries and the problem. Uh, so these wetlands in Asian countries are under real pressure because of this, because of this uh, uh, paddy rice and also those ones that are near the cities getting uh, lots of toxic from cities. Uh, and they are birds, these are birds that are under big threat because wetlands are closely and directly related to the birds, and they die. There is a real problem. We have to accept it that we are facing with that. And there are uh, now some companies that they don't, don't corporations, they do not think about this. This is the, uh, one of the angel of the earth, Russell Carson, that made, there was nothing like environmentalism that time, 60 years ago, and it was, toxic threat to fish and bear that 
brought everything about envir environmentalism. And every aspect of our lives um, today is about environmentalism, if you look. In all nations, we are all thinking about the environment. There was nothing before that. Still, pops, persistent organic pollutants are around, lots of them. And they are making problem. The thing that we discovered when I was working in the lab before my retirement, uh, it's an eggshell thickness. The, the calcium deposition cannot be continued anymore when toxic problems come, toxic or, and they bioaccumulate and they biomagnificate. So the, the eggs cannot, you know, change to chicks. And then that's what happened. Today, many, this is, this picture that you see here, see, is, this is Zion the Root. Perhaps you heard about that, in the beautiful city of Isfahan, ancient city of Iran. It was some years dry, dry, totally dry. Now they are trying to bring some water, and they are trying to uh, bring some tourists little by little more to see that. But you see, the, the dust problem all over the Persian Gulf here, it's, it's, a, it's a big problem. Last year I was there. In fact, I have a project later I point to that about in the south of Iran. There are people are there dying, really. People, and it is toxic dust. I'm going to I'm going to do a research on that because we have heavy metals and different toxics in, 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 in this dust. That, the, and it is because of the dryness of the wetlands that you see this picture is from one of my other presentations. The, the wetlands get dry. This is between Iraq and Iran. It's, it was a big wetland and disappearing little by little. And as you see, uh, where I was doing my PhD in Guelph, Ontario, we observed that some birds drop and die. Later, we realized in the lab that they get, they, they collect enough toxic and sequestrate. They, they just encapsulate them in the body. When they do 1,000, kilometers fly from Florida, come back, then, then that toxic, sequestrated toxic, different type of pesticide and that and that goes to the blood and the bird dies. It's some years that I have another message. Are we really getting any more speciation? Do we have, speciation is about the, how, how different Creations like insects, they were only thousands, pre-Comperian era, but now they are, they are three million. But it, it seems that we do not have any more speciation. It was my theory, in fact. And so it may be a, a stopped. And in fact, we have the sixth round of extinction, as they say, it, in this, uh, you know, after turning the century and in 215, we are getting the sixth round of uh, ex extinction of the whole life. And I'm going to, now, because I'm a pesticide toxicologist, but as of my, fortunately, as of my starting of my career, I went to the good side of the part. I went to, to be side of people and environment. After my master, 35 years ago in the University of Tehran. And the, just before coming, I saw this in, on the LinkedIn. Uh, see what happened about, about 20, 20 years ago, 25 children in Peru. They were killed just before getting to the door of the class, and 25 more are still paralyzed. And did you hear about the Bihar, India, three years ago? Again. And I'm sure that you heard about Bhopal, India. 
So it's all happening and happening. And I saw this before just coming. Agrochemicals market is going to get at 2018 242 billion dollars. Today pesticides are about 60 billion dollars. 60 billion dollar market. These are children of Bihar. Again, 20 of them killed very, very, very about three years ago. And I was crying really. And this is happening. In Iran, only, only from the rice tablet, phosphatoxin, we get 700 people killed by rice tablet every year. And with Paraquat, see, we have about 55 only last year. It's, it's really happening ever again and again. And this is the problem of really uh, pesticide and toxins. I started this, uh, my more work 15 years ago in kind of civil society to help the world about the, uh, I'm, doing, I'm doing really now in a level of globally following that. And we have more problem really in developing countries. We have more because of because there is no regulation. And if there is in many of Middle Eastern countries, there is regulation written but never enforced. Even you go there, and there is enforcement is a myth, nothing. And I'm very worried about that really. Uh, they are destroying our bees are getting really is getting to extinction because of neo nicotinoids, a group of pesticide that, and the interesting is that the regulation in, in, in US and Western countries is good. They are really good, and I, we always learn from EPA and that and that and that there. But it, it stops on the border. When it comes to, you know, Asian countries, no regulation really. And China and India in Asia, they are big producers of pesticides. And uh, big markets and obsolete pesticides, very, very big problems. We have more toxic exposure in Asian countries. We, are, we have really more exposure, less NGO activity because of rice, because of different things and geogenic and anthropogenic activities. We have more exposure and more medical geology problem like arsenic and iodine and that and that, uh, lead, Cut me on. So in Asian, and this is this is what I I it was in my Facebook. It's some months that is because of the you know they closed it, and but we we go there. We are okay. We we are we are very very uh, worried about the cumulative exposure. Getting different kinds from morning for the people and all our cumulative exposure and synergism. That's what happened really. And we have, I'm going to later this year in Singapore to talk about the biocides. Biocides are the big problem. Every day washing detergent and these things. Every day we are facing with that. The big problem of mercury and metal mercury now in Asia. That's a big problem. And in water is worst. Iran, and I am going to now point to some. This is that I climbed 15 years ago. It's a Damavan. This is Ramsar, where the wetlands started, Convention on Wetlands. This is a beautiful city. And this is around this city that all those paddy rice waters are situated. Siberian crane in the north of Iran, that's a big, uh, there are many, many of these things that now there are. This is some years ago, see, <laughs> I think now is, it will be, is this picture all around it, you know. This is the situation of, per, uh, of Caspian Sea. Uh, three months ago, our 13th Congress of Toxicology was on the Lake Urumiye. It was an international congress. See, this is Lake Urumiye. It's getting, it's, it's getting uh, really dried and now nothing left of it. And this is a big, you know, dam near Tehran. Tehran is in water crisis. And this picture, we were there about two months ago. 
less than two months ago. And it's getting really, the, the water line was here. And now, it, this is the Lardan. This is, this is in the middle of Iran. It's a salt marsh, again. This is the cheetah that is getting extinct and some left. Persian Gulf, this is the wetlands of Persian Gulf that I have a project there now. And Deshmai land, they are all under threat. And what I started to work as a, this is cooperation between Japan and Iran for Anzali. And this is this other, the situation in other countries of Asia. And uh, about cyanobacterial that I was very worried and there was good talks, uh, very good talks this uh, today and I'm not gonna go through that. And then uh, these are about uh, all uh, alternative. And only about this, please let me only show this, that this is the name work. I planted this tree 15 years ago. This is one of the best substituted alternative. We are we are going to put away pesticide, conventional pesticide. Neem tree, I'm planting neem tree in the Persian Gulf. This is Siri Island in the Persian Gulf. And we are planting neem. And we need help. And this is very important tree with lots of natural. And this is Persian lost powder that Persians were making lost powder 2,000 years ago and exporting to the world but not today. This is, uh, again, okay. Yeah, it went back. We need more green movements in Asia and that, and rich regulation. Europe is going very good to curb, to control the toxics by rich regulation. I am following the rich, really. And I'm trying to make a implication for developing countries from rich. They are going better than all other nations. US and Canada, they are most, they made most toxics. Australia is after Europe and then and after that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.